Going live, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the deep review, and it is the good, the bad, and the ugly news for, for sorry, March 2nd, 2020. Almost half the year is already done, and but we're still here. We're still alive, people. Life is still going on. We are still kicking. We're still doing. We're still living. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right, guys, today we're going to start off with a couple of really important news stories, and then we're going to end today with a whole bunch of really good that's happened in the world. First up... A little update from the election. Pete Buttigieg endorses Joe Biden from CNN. Pete Buttigieg endorses Joe Biden for president Monday night, telling a crowd in Dallas that the former vice president is the right candidate to bring back dignity to the White House. When I run for president, we made it clear that the whole idea was about rallying the country to, together to defeat Donald Trump and to win the era for the values that we share. Buttigieg said at a campaign stop, and that was always a goal that was much bigger than me becoming president, and it is the name of that very same goal that I am delighted to endorse and support Joe Biden for president. Buttigieg and Joe Biden are brothers now. I wish you could see this picture. I will eventually be able to put pictures on the screen, but it's Joe Biden and Buttigieg having a fucking bromantic hug man how romantic hug out tomorrow is super tuesday it's going to be neck and neck biden and fucking bernie sanders who will do it the electable guy who was in the white house at one point or the extremist on the left that everyone thinks is gonna take away all their money who will have the who will have the title we might know something tomorrow on Super Tuesday, 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 Super fucking Tuesday. Uh, I'm voting in the morning. I'm getting up fucking bright early. Fuck, I got to be there like at seven to beat the lines. Um, but I'm going to vote. And tomorrow, a lot of stuff is going to go down. Um, now, moving forward with this. Article from CNN. The endorsement is a boon to the former vice president and comes at a time that Amy Klobuchar is ending her campaign and backing Biden. The Minnesota senator will officially make her endorsement on Monday night in Dallas to a campaign aide told CNN. The endorsement represents a considling of the more moderate wing of the Democratic Party around Biden and a rejection of Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, who after strong showings in Iowa, New Hampshire, and Nevada represent the most significant challenge for Biden. This is essentially the establishmentarians of the Democratic Party. They really, really, they really don't like them. Some Bernie Sanders, the leadership of the Democratic Party is not Good with Bernie Sanders. They do not want him to try to even get close to the nomination. This is troubling and also interesting. My own political affiliation aside, this is, in essence, a weary battlefield that we are witnessing today, ladies and gentlemen. It is a beautiful fight of democracy. It is a great Great, great season for politics, ladies and gentlemen. It is a neck and neck race, and no one knows who's going to win. It's a whole new year, a whole new time, a whole new us. We don't know what's gonna hell's gonna happen. It's amazing. I am, I love this political season. You just don't know what the hell is gonna happen left to right. Moving on to the article. Sources told CNN early Monday that Buttigieg will, was weighing whether to endorse Biden or exiting the Democratic presidential, presidential race late Sunday night. Two spoke on Sunday night, sources said, and Buttigieg also spoke with former President Barack Obama. Pete Buttigieg had a plan for February. It didn't work out as he hoped. That's right. Peace out, Buttigieg. Uh, he will not go away lightly. You will see him around for a while. That's the thing. That's, that's exactly what the presidential race is. It's about lifting your name in the Democratic Party, and now people know who you are. That's all it is. It's a play. That's what all other people are doing. Everyone's just trying to make a name for themselves so they can have some more political, political stout later on in their dealings. This is basically them securing their seat in the Senate for the rest of their lives. 
That's exactly what a good, that's what every good politician does. They eventually run for president. Jesus. Ah, man. We'll see what happens, man. Tuesday's going to tell a lot of stuff. Uh, now on to some of the most important news. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the coronavirus is real. The coronavirus is coming to the United States. The coronavirus is here. The coronavirus is going to nestle up with us for a little while. Uh, the only thing that, 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 the only thing that you can do to help is just fucking wash your hands, people. Just wash your hands. You just take these two mitts and you put some soapy soap and you just wash it for 20 seconds. That's it. If we do that, we're fucking golden. Like, fucking golden. Now, with that said, there is a live, uh, there's a couple of news articles I'm going to read. First is just going to be one from Al Jazeera. Six coronavirus deaths in the U.S. China cases slow. The U.S. has reported six deaths from the coronavirus as the outbreak that started in China continues to spread to new countries around the world. The World Health, Cor world Health Organization urges countries to step up containment measures to rein in the infection. WHO Director General told the briefing on Monday night that the world has an uncharted territory with the new coronavirus because while it does spread within communities, it can also be contained. Containment of COVID-19 is feasible and must remain the top priority for all countries, he said. So essentially, this article is from Kate Mayberry from Al Jazeera. It's basically stating that WHO believes that this is still containable. Uh, it is not widespread yet, and it hasn't hit a level where they don't think it can't be ran in. So there's hope there. Um Look, America is definitely the most prepared on the planet to really deal with this thing, and I'm pretty sure. And and don't take it lightly, ladies and gentlemen. Um, two percent. This has a two percent kill rate. That is not nothing. The common cold or the flu takes away more about half a percentage of that. Okay, two percent is not nothing. It is still feasible. People are going to die from this if it gets out of hand. However. WHO, who I believe is at least the very least one of the only multinational health organizations that really is committed to helping humanity, I believe is a credible, uh, a, cr a credible source for this information and in saying that this thing is still containable. Don't worry. Also, wash your hands. Wash your goddamn hands. Wash them. Just do your duty to your country. Wash your hands, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we need to do. And to just illustrate how bad this infection has got and how fast it is climbing, I have a live update here. So CS CNBC does a coronavirus live update. So they continuously update this thing every single time there is any major news in the world about the coronavirus. For today, 11, 10 a.m., U.S. state Georgia confirms first two coronavirus cases. 10.15 a.m., Hong Kong will bring back 533 citizens from Wuhan. 9.15 a.m., South Korea reports jumps up 600 cases that are new. 9 a.m., Twitter strongly encourages all employees to work from home. 8 a.m., China reports 125 new cases and 31 more deaths. 7.50 a.m., the WHO says the epidemic spreading outside China are of the greatest concern. 6.38 p.m., Washington State governors say people should start to think about avoiding large events. 6.35 p.m., Pence says coronavirus-related travel restrictions may expand. 5.09 p.m., consumers buy up survival foods like dried beans and vitamins. And that is where it all stands, ladies and gentlemen, as of 10.32 p.m., on March 2nd of 2020 in the Northern Hemisphere in Dallas, Texas. Um, if, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be in it for the long haul. Don't panic. We'll be fine. Again, just wash your hands. It's all we need. It's all we need. All we need is washing our hands. All we need is washing our hands. Hands are washing is all we need. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end this with some good news. Some good, wholesome, just just, just good stuff. Ah, oh, just some good stuff. Good old good, good, 
good, good, good. Oh, this is a nice one from CNN. Molly Sadell finishes her first ever marathon and qualifies for the Tokyo Olympics. American runner Molly Seidel surprised even herself over the weekend by coming in second and the in the at the Olympic marathon trials in Atlanta. Her debut race at that marathon distance and punching her ticket to the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. The 25-year-old finished finished less than 10 seconds behind fellow American Alpine Tumok with a time of 2 hours and 27 minutes and 31 seconds. Another America, Sally, finished third to round out the red, white, and blue podium. You will never really know what it's going to be like until you get there, Sadal told Runner's World before the race. It's going to be an unknown of what your body can do. Keep an open mind and know how much it's going to hurt, and be prepared for the amount of pain. The former Notre Dame track and cross-country star was once considered one of the top female distance runners to watch. According to the Runner's World, According to Wonders World, she won NCAA championships in the 3,000, 5,000, and 10,000 meter, but her career was sidelined by injury, depression, and dishon and disordered eating. Ah, oh, come on, that's just, I mean, you, you gotta fucking, you gotta mention that shit. Come, fuck, I gotta mention that. Come on. Anyway, when you go to college, it's almost like the echo chamber where you see other women excelling in the sport and a very low body weight. She she said. I think the collegiate structure of running is great, but in a lot of ways is super harmful and not necessarily the most positive environment for girls, especially as they're coming into their bodies as women. All right, I see what she's saying. She eventually went on to rec to a recovery program, later re-entered the world of competitive running with a strong half marathon performance on the road in Atlanta, including winning the rock and roll half marathon in San Antonio, Texas in December of 2019. Seidel was considered a wild card going into the Olympic trials in Atlanta, but even she thought finishing the 10th and 20th range would be a good day. Good job, girl. Get you some. Get you some, girl. You fucking rock. Fuck yeah. Moving on to some other good news. From the Good News Network, you can now reforest the oceans with one online search at a time, thanks to a new search engine. The innovative new hydro-powered search engine is aiming to reforest the world's oceans and clean up the planet one internet search at a time. Ekroar it's kind of like saying, so it's kind of like it's E K O R U. Ekru, Ekru is a search engine that uses the memory, the, the money generated from sponsored search results to finance eco friendly charities. For every online search made on the search engine, the organization uses, excuse me, the revenue to help remove one pound of trash from the ocean. Australian tech investor and his wife, Allison, were inspired to launch the project after they moved to Kuala Lumpur and became increasingly concerned with the Asian's contribution to the ocean's plastic population. With his background in technology and her background in marketing, they launched ECRU back in January. We figured that the best way to have an impact and do something was to, was to use our combined skills, set, and experience to create ECRU to help raise money for the benefit of the ocean conservation. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, use that shit. Use that brain to do some good stuff in the world, man. That's what we all need to do. Like, whatever you think these people are doing, they're at least trying. You know, they're moving, they're doing stuff. They're moving atoms in the world and the universe. They're fucking getting off of their butts and they're getting to business. That's what we all need to do. And this world will be a better place. Yes. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, one last news story of the day. Passing at the age of 103, actor Kirk Douglas gives away an entire $61 million fortune to charity. A legend during the golden age of Hollywood, Kirk Douglas, best known for performances in films like Spartacus, was also a golden-hearted philanthropist. He continued his charitable givings away after his death on February 5th, donating the majority of his $61 million fortune to charity. 
It is, it is with a tremendous sadness that my brothers and I announced that Kirk Douglas left us today at the age of 103, wrote his son Michael, who did not receive any of his father's inheritance. To the world he was a humanitarian whose commitment to justice and to the causes he believed in set a, a standard for all of us to aspire to. According to the reports, charitable recipients include St. Lawrence University to help fund Kirk Douglas Scholarship for underprivileged students, preliminary uh, those who grow up in the poverty like Kirk did himself back during the Great Depression of the 1920s and 30s. Kirk Douglas has been transcendently generous to the St. Lawrence University and remained committed to his alma mater and our students throughout the decades, And the schools, said the school's presidents. Contributions also went to the Westwoods uh, Celine Temple, Culver City's Kirk Douglas Theater, and Children's Hospital Los Angeles, which had also previously received large donations from the Oscar-winning uh, actor, including $1.3 million purchase of new equipment for the pediatrics division. Kirk Douglas, thanks, man. You know what? Man had millions of dollars. Most of this, some of this stuff went to his own estate, you know, his own charitable works, but, you know, if you're bored and you're, you're rich, I mean, why not? You know, why not just do some good stuff for people? You know, why not? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for today. Sorry it's so late. I will do better tomorrow, probably around 4. But thank you for watching. Appreciate you giving me the likey poo. You have a good one. This has been Diaz Ryu. I am Diaz. What's up?